Welcome back to the show. Did you know that it has already been the rainiest, wettest season? fall season on record in Seattle. Oh my gosh, we've had like 18 inches of rain or something already and it's just what, ending November. We're going to talk about that more in Hot Topics later. But first, the dark rainy season, it is not going away anytime soon. So what's the worst part about that? Having to go do errands, go groceries, or even walk your dog. But Nicole Ellis is a professional dog trainer and member of Rover's Dog People panel, and she's got tips for pet owners to survive the dog days of fall and winter. Walks are really important for our dogs, not only for the exercise, obviously we don't want overweight animals, but that stimulation. Mm -hmm. They use their noses to sniff on walks, tight going, which is oh. great for our puppies, our senior dogs, but also that sniffing is mental enrichment. And that's really good. It works their brains. Just like a kid going to school, they need to go to school and get that enrichment and keep them busy. And it's same with our dogs. And when dogs don't get enough mental enrichment, that's when we see dogs chewing up furniture, digging on the couch, and a lot of destructive behavior. So going for a nice walk, no matter how gloomy it is, is really important for our pets. Okay, okay, so invest in some rain gear for ourselves. Do you have any suggestions on rain gear for the dogs though? Absolutely, and it varies by every dog. So I have two dogs. This one, Rossi, hates his feet getting wet. So rain oh. booties are a must for him. So take a look, you wanna make sure you're measuring their feet. Dogs okay. have different oh. front feet sizes than back feet sizes. So usually just put them on a piece of paper and you draw a line on one side and the other and measure. Oh. So we want to make sure we don't want to go for a walk in shoes too small for us. So we want to make sure our pets are comfortable too. Okay. My other dog, she just doesn't like the rain hitting her. She could care less about her feet. So rain jackets are great. Um, and there's different types out there. Some just go straight over them. Some their little paws go through. So put it on and make sure it doesn't rub anywhere. It's very common that it will rub under their armpits right here. So we want to okay. make sure it's comfortable for our pets. Otherwise, they're not going to want to wear it. Yeah, and I'm assuming if you go to Mud Bay or Petco, they'll let you kind of try it on the dog, right? Exactly. And there's ones that are super simple that just kind of go over the head and go down. Um, I try to find one with a hood, but so that it doesn't fall over where my dog can't see. Some of the hoods oh. are really huge. So finding that right fit's really important. And if you have a dog that's extra long, let's say a Corgi or a Doxy, they have raincoats out there that are perfect for those breeds. Okay. And it's a good idea when you are using this equipment to get them used to it ahead of time. Don't wait for that rainy day where they might be a little bit stressed out and they already know rain's not going to be fun. Okay. So I say, put this equipment on in your house, play some fetch, do some training. <laughs> it seems a little crazy, but we want to build that positive association. What about the muddy mess afterwards? Absolutely. So um, there's special doggy wipes. Lots of great companies offer those. Baby wipes can be great too for our pets. Just make sure there's no alcohol in those. We don't want to oh, dry okay. out those paws and have our dogs licking that alcohol either. Mm -hmm. um, a nice warm cloth. I usually keep a rag near the front door that I can like warm up and like wipe down their paws when we get back. So That's that helps idea. us not bring the mud all in our house. And if sometimes when there's rain and snow they put like salt and stuff down there's chemicals so that also helps us wipe all that off and not right. bring it into our homes all right so we're avoiding wet dog smell muddy paws um finally what if we want to just avoid the outdoors altogether say it's a day that it's just probably not even safe to go outside it's too windy is there an alternative to going on a walk is there a way to kind of you know suffice absolutely it? so there's a few things we can do um, first one is, as we talked about mental enrichment, is doing some mental enrichment in your home. That's, there's doggy puzzle games. Um, my dog loves those. And there's simple games you can do DIY at home, like taking a cupcake tin and putting some treats and some maybe tennis balls and toys in there. Okay. That's letting them work their minds. We need to find an outlet for that energy. All um, right. You can also find a rover sitter near you and set up a doggy daycare session. Playing oh. with another dog. Often we get our tired dog at the end of the day. And that could just be during the day. So your dog still comes home, sleeps with you, but he gets to run around, play tug of war, play fetch. And I think that's an awesome solution because they don't need to be getting wet. And you can always, if it's too wet to really be walking our dogs, they still need to go outside and use the restroom. So you can still get like an AstroTurf, a fake AstroTurf, a little grass patch and put it right outside your door so that they can quickly go out potty and come back in and 
start with that when it's not raining, obviously, just to help our dogs get adjusted a little bit. Genius. Oh my gosh, Nicole, thank you for all these tips for helping us get our pets to the winter season with happy wagging tails. Thank you so much. Let's all stay dry and make sure our dogs still get some enrichment and fun walkies together. (laughs) 